also a say Jason girls best friend. It's so big, it doesn't even fit in the bucket. Say hi to munchies. <laughs> so is it like a electric chair? Rock rock. <laughs> one woman with three vaginas. It's the president. No one brings like president. This is the motto of the day, which we always think on. It's like a very simple message to communists to fuck off. Hi, I'm Hannah, I'm in Prague, and this is the Munchies Guide to Bohemia. Bohemia is the biggest region in the Czech Republic, and Prague is both its capital and culture center. As a Czech expat, I spend most of my time living in London and Berlin, but always find myself returning to this beautiful city. Bohemia has a long, rich history reflected in the old castles and quaint villages that fill the country. Today, 25 years after the Velvet Revolution and the peaceful end of communism, the Czech people are once again enjoying their freedom to experiment with food while also keeping the old traditions alive. I want to do a banh mi sandwich, which is a Vietnamese sandwich, but we do a little different where we add barbecue flavoring with Slivovica. We're using happy meat from happy pigs. Were they drinking Slivo before they were slaughtered? <laughs> yeah, they were in the party on the fields, not locked up in a pen. People here sell catch fish, make plum brandy, and wrestle with pigs. But a new health conscious and eco-friendly generation of Czechs are bringing new life to the bohemian food scene. We know all of these farmers, they are giving us these ingredients and we are friends with them. And if you know someone who is dirty from the dirt, you feel responsibility that you have to make it as good as possible because he's your friend. And if you destroy it, you're stupid. I visited the farmer's market at Ježího Spodibra in Prague's 3rd district. For a long time, you could only get shitty quality ingredients at the supermarket. But now, thanks to farmer's market like this one, high quality goods like fruit, vegetables, bread, coffee and even beer and wine are easily accessible. Although buying regional, fresh groceries may sound simple, for the Czech people this is still new. I just heard that uh, a boss of this company collects the mushrooms by himself and when he has a lucky day, he's able to bring like 80 kilos of mushrooms per day. This is also the area where a lot of young people live. And since everyone lives nearby, people often come to the market not just to get food, but also to meet friends. Simple grocery shopping easily turns into the whole day spent here. Apart from the hard-working farmers and sellers here, like the celebrity of the market for me personally, is Milan. Yeah, it's always nice to have beer with Milan. Say hi to Munchies. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. Local and seasonal products have become essential for modern Czech cuisine, setting it apart from the more traditional fare. Take the Modern Bistro Sisters, owned by Hanna Michopoulou, one of the founders of the farmer's market movement in Prague. Hanna is known for her innovative approach to chlebiček, a traditional open-faced sandwich, which she upgrades with locally sourced ingredients. So Hanna, tell us, your open-faced sandwich, also called chlebiček, looks like our piece. Chlebiček is a typical uh, Czech fast food and it actually means open-faced sandwich. All the stuff you can get in the city is uh, from cheap ingredients. It's from cheap yeast bread, from cheap salami, cheap cheese, uh, loads of mayonnaise. And uh, so I thought about it and said, okay, I'll make the opposite. So we use just really high quality ingredients, full of flavor, rich, as you see, and uh, so, I think it's very special because like it's open, it's, it's uh, beautifully decorated. You can enjoy it visually. Where do you get your ingredients from? It's mixed. Vegetables we have from uh, local farmers uh, close to Prague. I think it's a new trend when you like sourcing your new and own uh, suppliers. I love celery and this is celery at Klebiček, so... Oh 
While Hana modifies this unhealthy Czech classic, others strive to preserve old recipes. Petra Pospichová travels to remote villages and collects traditional recipes that are about to be forgotten. She's a personal hero of mine. There was this gap when uh, communism regime ruined everything, including like the, the gastronomical tradition. I'm the after gap generation that is again into cooking and is interested in uh, all the old stuff, the procedures, all the way how to make things and how the grannies made it. Anna, do you know my auntie Inka? No. She is the lucky owner of this oh, beautiful you. cuisine and one of the best cooks I ever met. Oh, that's Actually. a compliment. Coming from her, that's a major <laughs> yeah, I imagine. So. Uh, I, see, I see you are cooking something with Czech mushrooms. Yes. What that's else? Uh, I mean, it's still oh, autumn. Yeah and we'll mix it with the sourdough, mm -hmm. which is another important thing in this country. We make bread from that usually, but this time we'll make a soup from the sourdough. Did you collect the mushrooms by yourself? Of course, that's what we do and all <laughs> Czechs do. The whole autumn, when the mushroom season starts, Czech people start to get crazy and they wake up like four in the morning to be first in the forest. Years ago, when people ask me what the traditional Czech food is like, I would say it's a soft, beige and round, because in my childhood everything was cooked forever, until it lost every touch of color. <laughs> it's wonderful for me now to be back here and see so much wonderful food, you know, wonderful produce, farmer's markets. We had nearly renaissance doing, I know. because and all the old recipes are coming up and people are kind of reinventing it and uh, renewing and finding new way how to cook them. And it's amazing because the original, for example, village cuisine, it's not heavy, it's not soft and it's not round. But I would say it's poor and pure. Well, you can definitely taste the sourdough in it and the mushrooms because they are dried, soaked in water and then just boiled. It's so chunky. It's from Krkonoše, isn't it? Yes, it's a complete north, so from mountains. After cooking traditional Czech food with Petra, I was interested to see how a contemporary Czech chef was approaching some of the same ingredients. I went to see Aldrich Sahajdak, chef of the Michelin star restaurant La Degustation Bohème Bourgeois. I have long admired him for the plateful and thoughtful spin he puts on Bohemian cuisine. So now we are at the kitchen of La Degustación and we have four stones in front of us. What are they for? People here eating from the stones, not only from the plates. They eating from stones, from piece of wood, from everything that is surrounding us. We're setting the menu according to the season. So every day we're changing the menu. Our farmers, our, our mushroomers, our hunters, they give me call every morning and I pick up what they have and we put it on the menu. So I'll take you downstairs where we have the studio of Tasty Kitchen. He's making only ash. <laughs> but this, we do the same way with smoking potatoes. And he doesn't have any hair, that's why he is doing it. This is our treasure. This is the place where we are inventing dishes, so where we are looking for the best taste. Usually three times in a week, two chefs are locked down here and with carrots and they are not supposed to leave this place until they find out the best way how to cook carrots. So this is the result from the work we have. Everything is fermented now, so it's pickled. In a book we have upstairs, which is our secret cookbook, which is full of recipes and in the future we will find if it's work or not. It's not a dog. <laughs> we haven't been thinking about cooking a dog yet. And as you can see, there is no any bullets inside the body, which is great. And we have a person, he's got an eagle. And he is hunting this with the eagle, which is perfect because there is no bullets. Well, what 
what we have here is svíčková sauce, creamy heavy sauce based on roasted root vegetables, carrot and celery. However, here they serve it as a puree. Okay, let's give it a try. Yeah, I love svíčková sauce and this is like concentrated svíčková sauce. I think I'm gonna lick the plate when the camera is off. I like the... No, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> totally love the idea that you come to the fanciest restaurant where you get one bite of celery. It makes you think how good, simple and local ingredients really are. So this is another food you're gonna eat with your hands. Fried skin of the fish with a dill afterwards, potato chips with pickled mushrooms and rabbits. And this is the uh, beef tartare and crispy bread. Snails, escargot, if I should ever in my life try it somewhere, it should be probably here. I'm seriously afraid of snails. It's not like I dislike them, I'm scared of them. This is one of the biggest challenges in my life. Jesus. I think I, I need a minute. No, just for the record, it's not that I don't like it. If you are into food, you just can make a difference between the things that are not really good or are just simply not your thing. Snails are so disgusting. They are so disgusting. It scares me and I'm, I just eat one. That was, it, was, it was so nicely done. Svíčková sauce is normally served with four dumplings, slice of lemon and whipped cream and cranberries and it it looks kind of ridiculous and look how it's served here I just uh, yeah it looks so beautiful I don't even want to destroy it they reduce it into puree instead of dumplings I have a, a layer of lard on, on the meat the meat is not beef as usually it's sirloin from fellow deer Oh wow. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Prague is constantly evolving. Every time I come back, something has changed. Not only are fresh, local ingredients everywhere and easily accessible, but new, boundary-pushing restaurants and bistros are opening up all over the city. Every time I visit, I can't wait to see what's new. I believe there is nothing better than cloudy apple juice. Slivo with 70% ABV. <laughs> Let's do some sausages. I'm going to do a banh mi sandwich where we add a barbecue flavoring with slivovice. Mascari vaporizer. Well, I, I have to say it's really nice. I'm sorry, did I just spit on you by accident? <laughs> <laughs> I had too much slivovice.